Good afternoon and welcome to Transform Finance with Michael Ryan. It's 20 past one on Wednesday, the 7th of August. This is actually my second attempt at recording my first podcast, Transform Finance with Michael Ryan, and uh, my LinkedIn Live newsletter update for the week. I'm going to combine the two of them in one. I have already made, uh, I've learned my first lesson with regards to doing the recording properly. I'm actually doing this on site. And uh, I'm at a client at the moment and I've taken out my lunch break in order to do this because I want to be able to share information with you when I'm on the go. And like most consultants, I spend an enormous amount of time traveling um, and I'm actually at a client site today. So first of all, a very big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to Transform Finance with Michael Ryan. The link for that is in my bio of my LinkedIn profile. We have approximately 2000 people who have subscribed so far. And it's a good mix, actually. I reckon there's about 85% of them haven't gone through it who are senior finance procurement or HR leaders, uh, people involved also in the transformation space. Some of my competitors. Um, and on top of that, I have uh, a fantastic uh, interest in sport. There is an awful lot of, uh, actually, you would find Olympic champions, uh, footballers, former footballers, um, people who are used to competing at the top of their game, um, and one or two media personalities as well. Indeed, one or two of them have actually appeared in my book. <laughs> so that was completely coincidental. Um, so that's that's the first thing. So thank you for subscribing to the 2,000 people who have done so. I started the newsletter about four months ago, and I've since written 34 editions of it because I felt that LinkedIn newsletters were just not being used well enough. And as an Irishman, I have two skills. I'm very good at talking, and I'm very good at writing. Uh, so writing up a newsletter edition for me when I have the idea, it, it basically just flows and I write them quite quickly. So one of the ambitions I had for this year was to use LinkedIn Live, which I haven't explored in any great detail in the past, uh, in order to give you a summary of what's in the newsletters, bring things to your attention, uh, let you know what I'm doing, etc., and, and let you know what I've planned. But before I go on to that, I just want to share that there are actually two other newsletters. One of them is Finance Transformation UK, which is relevant to my consultancy. Uh, that has 4,000 subscribers. And the other one is Finance Transformation Magazine, which has 600 subscribers. So between them, I have approximately 6,500 subscribers, probably a degree of overlap, um, but not massive overlap because they were all founded at different points in time. And so I released the articles in slightly different format through all three routes. But well, going forward, if you could subscribe to Transform Finance with Michael Ryan, I would greatly appreciate that. It makes it easier for me. On top of that, I have a MailChimp subscriber list of about 4,000, and that went out yesterday with a summary of the three most relevant articles um, I had. And rather than do them as links, I deliberately copied the entire newsletter article into the MailChimp. So people get MailChimp cold call emails uh, for some of them, and they're like, oh, I don't want to open it or I don't want to follow the link. I actually put the information I wanted to share with you directly into it, so you can just read it as it is. You don't need to follow a link to anywhere. You are welcome to look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, you are welcome to subscribe directly to the newsletter. And the other thing I'd like you to do, if you're interested in, in the information that I share, is bookmark my website. So my website, easy enough to remember, uh, and an absolutely inspired purchase about six years ago, is financetransformation.co.uk. Uh, as an Irishman, I do actually do primarily do all of my work in the UK. So it's easy to remember. And what do I do? I perform finance transformation. And uh, it's easy to find, financetransformation.co.uk. Now, I deliberately set out to share my knowledge via the newsletter because writing is something that, as I said to you, I have as a, as a skill. And it is a key component of actually being a consultant. You need to be able to synthesize what the problem is for a client, present the options, and move them along and tell the story. Um, and I tried to illustrate that with a degree of humor and plenty of reference to the fact that I absolutely love football, soccer, Gaelic football, and athletics. You will find the newsletter articles peppered with that, because otherwise we're just talking about finance, which can from time to time get a little bit dry. So it's deliberately to, to uh, hold your interest. Should we say. But where can you find the newsletter? I think on average, what LinkedIn does is it shows you the three previous newsletters when you look them up on LinkedIn itself. So we got a plug-in and 32 of the existing 34 newsletters are currently visible on the website. So if you bear with me, what I suggest you do 
bookmarkfinancetransformation.co.uk, go to the page which says newsletters, and then you'll see each of the images that I posted when I posted the stories. Um, and I would easily say that three quarters of them give you tips on how you run a transformation program. The rest of it gives you some feedback on how you can build a substantial LinkedIn profile. I have, at the end of the day, 22,000 uh, followers on LinkedIn. Um, and I'll also give you some tips on how you can find a job if you are in the finance space and you're looking for a job, or you, like myself, are an intern. Um, and finding their next contract is, is always a challenge. So just in case you haven't met me before, you're watching this or listening to this for the first time, I'm a management consultant. I have spent my entire career running finance projects of one size or shape or another. I started my career at Whitbread Beer Company back in 1996. Spent five enjoyable years there. It's a fantastic company. Um, I then went to work for Argos for five years where I got my first exposure to finance shared services. And I then spent five years as part of Deloitte's shared services and outsourcing team uh, based in London and traveling all over the place. Fantastic experience, 15 years, five years apiece. And then I spent two years working for Logic Air running a similar practice in the finance transformation shared services space. For the last 12 years, I have existed as an interim in the shark infested waters of contracting. <laughs> they are a challenge in themselves. Um, people do ask me from time to time whether they should take up contracting. And I always say to them, uh, my advice is very simple. If you're stable, settled, uh, used to routine, uh, don't do it. Because half of your time will be spent doing business development in order to win contracts, or at least find them and then win them, and the other half is spent delivering them. So you may love what you do, but finding a steady stream of work to support it is a challenge because the country is full of consultants. Obviously, the large consultancies that we all compete against and those that have left them and set up on their own. So you're up against a competition pool of several thousand. So don't take the decision lightly. So, um, so the two resources I give you, the newsletter, I give you the website. So if you go to the website, you'll see an awful lot of the activity I've done over the last three or four years. Those of you that know me well, who've watched this or read my stuff, um, you know that I place a great emphasis on video and producing videos in studios in order to show you how professional they can be. Um, what I'm trying to do with this is do a LinkedIn Live on the fly on a regular basis whilst I'm off traveling for work and point you in the direction of relevant articles that are within the newsletter. So the audio visual skills of this will never be perfect because I'm relying upon somebody giving me a room in order to conduct it. And quite happily, my first test at this an hour ago was unsuccessful. and My second attempt at it may well run into somebody's lunch break in about 20 minutes. So what's on the website so first of all there's plenty of uh, knowledge with regards to consulting if you want a finance transformation program set up structured or run for you uh, i am an expert in shared services i got my first exposure to shared services at argos back in 2000 and that was really exploded in the five years i spent as part of the shared services team at Deloitte. Um, and you will find some of the other activities that i've done so i'm uh, one of the founders of finance transformation magazine so if you go over to the website and you look at the tab, which is called resources, I put everything that I've produced in the last few years, there is a sample of it within there. So you'll find uh, several editions of Finance Transformation Magazine that you can click through. You will also find my podcasts, The Leader's Interview with Karen Young, Jason Cobine, and uh, Rebecca Howard. You will find the interviews that I conducted in a set piece environment as part of the Success Leaves Clues series that I set up last year which took place in London, in Birmingham at the ground of Aston Villa, and at Old Trafford, a labor of love for me uh, for at Manchester United. I interviewed some of my associates, Mark Saywell, Chris Tomlinson, Mark Vincent, and a whole host of other people who are uh, well known within the finance transformation space and have something to add to any attempt that you're making to transform your finance. You'll find those videos in there. If you go to the home page of the website and drop to the bottom, you will see the link to the YouTube page. And there's an additional 75 to 80 videos there, which show the one of the core consulting skills of interviewing. Uh, I'm doing the interviewing. And you will learn from the knowledge of the individuals that I'm interviewing across the finance transformation space. So there are some of the resources available to you within the website and within the newsletter. In addition to that, we have a brand ambassador. 
So we launched a training course called AP1 back in uh, March, which was basically my method of transforming an accounts payable function, which has largely remained the same since I started doing this for Whitbread back in 1996. And it's a nine step program that I put in place whereby you could transform accounts payable yourself. You just need to follow the structured steps that I lay out within the course. And I wanted somebody to act as brand ambassador to the course who epitomized what it took to be successful. Uh, and I selected a young lady who is, her name is Lara O'Byrne. She's the current national indoor heptathlon champion. And she's recently been to, to the inaugural World Women's Decathlon in America where she finished a very, very credible sixth. And Lara's story is told in our brand ambassador piece within the resources section of the website. And indeed, the output of her competition this week uh, and the story to back it up will be revealed next week and we'll put onto the website as well. So between the magazine, the podcast, the videos, all of the set piece, the camera videos I've done where I explore some of the top pieces associated with finance transformation, um, there is an awful lot of resources in one place. So I suggest bookmarking the website because I'm always adding new material to us. Um, maybe subscribe to the YouTube page. And I'm going to add even more to how I um, relay information. I'm going to set up a podcast as a result of this, this activity I'm doing here today, um, which was quite simply be called Transform Finance with Michael Ryan. So an awful lot of the newsletter, I combine humor and my love of sport with um, teaching you something about how to run a transformation program or an element of it that's important to, to focus on. Um, and that makes it more interesting. We talk about, you know, who played who at the weekend, how well Man United are doing, or more often than not, how well they're not doing. And it just adds a little bit of flavor to what can be potentially, in some people's eyes, a dry subject. I don't think it is, but that's because I live and breathe it every day of the week. Um, and hopefully we can get you interested by hooking you in via some of the other interests you have yourself. Of the 2,000 subscribers to the newsletter, you have about in excess of 80% of them are senior finance, HR, or procurement people. Um, you also have a smattering of Olympic champions. There's quite a few Olympians in it. There's quite a few former footballers. There's an awful lot of media personalities. Whether they're the individuals themselves or their, or their social media teams, I don't know. Um, but it doesn't matter. It just means that you're in good company. And it's one of the reasons I chose Lara as a brand ambassador because the girl is successful. She understands the discipline to compete in a seven event uh, competition um, and what it takes to train for that every day of the week since she was quite young. Um, and I thought she was excellent brand ambassador and has been all year long for us across Finance Transformation Magazine, the AP1 training course, the Finance CPD offering that we have uh, where you can learn even more about transformation and acquire yourself some CPD points. So there's an awful lot in the website, so I suggest you bookmark it um, as a resource, which is invaluable, which is going to explode even more with some more of the information I plan to pass uh, across. The newsletter page contains the 34 previous editions, um, and it's a plugin which links it to, to LinkedIn, so it's updated every two to three days or so. Um, but it's easy to flick through and work out what topic is relevant to you at the moment, have a read, leave your comments, if you want me to talk about a particular topic in particular, either DM me um, or just write the comments into the particular article that you are reading. So that's where we're at with regards to LinkedIn newsletter. So during the course of this week, I released uh, three articles that were relevant and that I wanted to bring to your attention if you're running a project at the moment. And I entitled this uh, ERP strategy because that's the name of one of the articles, make it easy for you to find in the newsletter list. And it focuses upon what happens when somebody comes to me and starts to talk about their ERP. And it's interesting how they do that. You would think that they primarily come to me to ask me, how do we run the RFP process to select an, an ERP? But actually, half of the time they come to me for confirmation that they made the correct decision. This is very interesting because, in essence, these are my peers. They've made a decision, uh, not something that they do regularly in the course of their, their jobs, and they want a sounding board for that decision. The basis for me giving them any form of opinion is to review the business requirements, what's the current operating model of the business itself in its entirety, and the current operating model of finance, which, which fits into that and supports that. 
And then we know from that kind of mapping the territory, which is the name of one of the newsletter articles, whether we've gone down the right ERP route or we need to pull back slightly. And that is one of the most common requests that I get. I get requests for assurance, project assurance, program assurance, decision assurance. In essence, it's a sounding board and giving you a second opinion from a professional similar to yourself. And we all do need that. We need a second opinion on what we're doing. Um, it helps us end up with the best result, hopefully. The second and a more logical one, which you were probably expecting, is that clients come to me and want help to structure their RFP process. How do they run it? What's the ideal number of um, respondents that they want? How should they run the process itself? Um, myself and my business associate, Mark Saywell, the two of us met working years ago for Deloitte. I'm the people and change organization guy, and he's the ERP tech expert. And between the pair of us, we guide clients through that process to give them, hopefully, the optimum result. So that's a good article, and that's there. I published that through all three channels yesterday. I should also point out we have an additional 4,000 email subscribers on MailChimp, and I gave them the article in narrative format because I know some people don't like clicking links. So you can easily read it in the email that I sent. If you want to be added to the MailChimp, which is a summary of what I send out um, to the newsletter, you can uh, drop me a DM with your email address. Otherwise, I'd prefer everybody subscribe to Transform Finance with Michael Ryan. It makes it easier for me to disseminate the information quickly and easily while I'm on the middle. That was the ERP strategy one. That actually led on to a second one, sparked by a conversation I was having last week with a client around finance process mapping. Now, finance process mapping is possibly one of the most irritating exercises in finance transformation or in finance full stop. Nobody likes doing it. Nobody volunteers to do it. And client staff inwardly groan, uh, I would say, every time they're asked to be involved in it. So you have to get it right. And so what I did was I published a seven-step guide to this as to how I do it. Um, now, in fairness, I was taught how to do this when I worked for Deloitte for five years. But the approach, I have applied it over and over and over again. Um, because what I want to do, I want to get you to focus top down. And I want you to remember context and numbers. A process map, which is just a drawing, and people get hung up on the Visio element of this, um, that, that's not what this is about. What we're trying to do is to draw a, a circle around everything that can happen within a process, where the risks and opportunities are within it, where it's compliant or not compliant, anything basically that should be flagged up, up the chain, finance director, CFO, whichever. So you view this top down. You identify the process taxonomy first, all of the processes that could go into it. You do not start it from the bottom by sitting with John or Jane and go and tell me what you do. If you do that, you will fail. And the process mapping is a key input to the as is of a current operating model, which influences your target operating model and most definitely influences your business requirement for an ERP selection exercise. Um, do not feel you're alone. Most people don't volunteer to do process mapping exercise. But you will massively increase your chances of success if you start from the top down make sure you've got a process taxonomy and put context around it. What do I mean by context? Well, you start from the very top. How big is the business? 50 million turnover. How many heads does it have? It has a thousand. How many people in finance support that? 50. And then you go down from there. What do the 50 of them do? We, you always start from the top of the tree. It's storytelling at its most basic. Yeah, set the context and then place numbers against it. What the numbers do is they give you relativity. So don't be afraid. Um, I always uh, ascribe, ascribe to the uh, Peter Drucker maxim, uh, if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. And that applies most definitely to the relativity of a finance process. And you know the entire system is full of numbers. You just need to drag them out in order to tell the story. That's finance process mapping. One of the other uh, articles that I wrote about two to three weeks ago concerned organization design for finance. So people start out on a program, and you might have 100 FTE in finance, set up in a particular way at several different sites, locations, countries, markets, whatever. And you're going to change something. You're going to upgrade the ERP, leaner, faster, better, et cetera. Or you're going to adopt a new operating model, finance center of excellence, potentially, shared service center, BPO. So what you started with is not going to be what you finished with. And actually being able to work that out, that movement from A to B, is quite a skill. And it is largely numerically based. So if you don't grasp the fact that when you start a transformation program, 
you've got to baseline your project correctly. You've got to get the numbers that are relevant. It will be impossible when you come to design the future team uh, later down the line. Um, what I'm seeing more and more over the course of the last couple of years is clients are coming to me because they need help in the middle of a project. And they're coming at that stage because they're about to go live. They're, they're, you know, the rubber is about to hit the road. They're getting slightly nervous. And in every single instance, the cause of the problem was skipping the business requirements phase. Now, you can call business requirements wherever you want. Assessment, assessment, uh, feasibility, discovery, requirements gathering, whatever. Well, basically, it's the baseline of your project. If you don't know what you start with, you'll have no idea whether you succeeded when you end up with something else. And you certainly won't control the creation of the something else. So I encourage clients to invest that initial three months in a project, which can potentially last 18 months and beyond, to get the facts right and get everybody on the same page with regards to how we start. So I always say to clients, the goal of us is actually in the current operating model. They tend to get fixated on the target operating model. And start with what you currently have. If you don't understand what you currently have, you have no chance whatsoever of correctly designing what's going on. So those three articles across ERP strategy, finance process mapping and how to do it for success, and organization design for finance by numbers, they're all available. By the end of tomorrow, they'll probably all be available on my own particular website, but you can also find them in LinkedIn. Um, and where you have other subjects that you want me to cover, uh, feel free to drop me a DM or write comments into the, the articles themselves. Uh, we may not all agree on how these things are done, but the more topics you send to me that you want me to discuss, we can put it out there, and then other people can chip in as they like with, with different ideas and your own experiences and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to create uh, a method by which I give you a summary of what's in the newsletter, encourage you to subscribe to it, Transform and Finance with Michael Ryan, uh, encourage you to bookmark the website because there's so much information on it, um, I've had several clients approach me this year because they have watched the videos within it. And don't forget that there's 75 to 80 videos on the YouTube page. Um, and they're all with top class finance professionals. I always say you don't need to be famous. You just need to be good at what you do. And some of the interviews are fantastic. You might not have heard of the individuals, but what they've got to teach you and what they've got to impart um, is fantastic stuff. So make sure you look up financetransformation.co.uk on the YouTube site as well. So I'm conscious of the fact that everybody's busy, everybody's on the go, everybody's on the move. So what I want to do is, out of this, is start a podcast called Transform Finance with Michael Ryan. Now, what I've done in the open in 25 minutes of this, I've told you who I am, I'm doing the introductory piece. I've given you the background as to why I'm here, and I've given you some context as to the other people who are also interested in this, you're not just on your own. And now I want to give it to you in a method by which you can absorb it and move on with your day. What I really want to do is something similar to what I've done in the book that I created, which is to get you to stop and think. I want to put something in here, which when you're doing something critical for your program, you go, uh, hold on a second. The answer to that is probably in one of those, which will be by then about 60 to 70 editions of this newsletter. And you can go easily and look it up on my website. Or you can contact me directly in order to discuss it with me. The clients asked me for about two or three things. One, as I said to you earlier, the second opinion assurance piece. The second thing they asked me to do is to design how their transformation program should go. So assess whether they should be done in the first place, set them up for success. And the third thing is I do tend to get called in into in-flight programs in order to take over running the program team or running the finance function itself on behalf of clients uh, where they need that uh, rigor, if you like. Um, so I have a high degree of experience in managing large amounts of, of finance staff and uh, in, in doing the cerebral piece, which is the design, what the solution would be. And uh, I bring those two pieces of skill sets together. I know what it looks like in a blueprint and I know what it looks like when you try to implement it. So I have a lot of knowledge to share. I'm quite happy to share the knowledge. I am still perfecting this. Uh, when I tried this an hour ago, I managed to uh, make a mistake. So I'm doing this for the second time. Hopefully this works perfectly. And you should be able to receive it in podcast format, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, reach out to me if you have any questions. Reach out to me if you need any work or any support in the work that you're doing. Uh, happy to answer your questions. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. And this will go down as episode one of our podcast, 
Transform Finance with Michael Ryan. All the best. Talk to you soon, Michael.